Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. We in the last class we have discussed the uh, drying technology and in that we were discussing the different psychrometric processes okay, and how we can describe them uh, and describe the air properties in the psychrometric chart. Now, today we will see that first moisture content. So, uh, since we are uh, dealing with the drying phenomena and in drying we normally perform to reduce the moisture content and uh, with that we are lowering the water activity to increase the shelf life of the product because moisture content is an important phenomena all the contamination or the, the degradation of the food material uh, is caused by principally the moisture content. Okay. So, all the microbiological uh, contamination or enzyme uh, enzymatic degradation if you want to decrease. So, first of all we need to lower the moisture content. Then uh, this is very important that how we can express the moisture content or how we can calculate the moisture content. So, moisture content can be expressed either percentage weight basis or by percentage dry basis. Okay. So, here capital M represents the total weight of product that is weight of the moisture present in the product plus weight of the bone dry material. Okay. Now, uh, if we express this as uh, mass of the water divided by total mass into 100. So, this is percentage weight basis and mass of water by only the dry weight of the of the material into 100 that is the percentage dry basis. Now, in this one form to the other we can convert. Okay. So, how we uh, do that? So, the relation between moisture content weight basis and moisture content dry basis. So, moisture content weight basis is Mw by capital M. So, capital M can be written as Mw plus Md dry matter and moisture content. Now, we divide both the side of the numerator and denominator by the dry weight. Okay. So, Mw by Md that divided by 1 plus Mw by Md. So, Mw by Md that is the moisture content dry basis divided by 1 plus moisture content dry basis into 100. So, this is moisture content weight basis. Right. So, moisture content weight basis is moisture content dry basis divided by 1 plus moisture content in dry basis. Similarly, we can convert this moisture content dry basis to weight basis as well by moisture content weight basis divided by 1 minus moisture content weight basis. So, always moisture content in the dry basis is uh, higher than the moisture content weight basis okay. because the denominator is reducing. So, always we are getting this as higher value. And then we will see that if we are given that certain condition that we need to dry the, the product to achieve the safe storage level, then how we can perform. So, let us take uh, five, 500 kg of paddy dried from 20 percent moisture content weight basis to 15 percent moisture content weight basis we need to calculate the amount of water that needs to be removed during drying. So, amount of water in the feed was how much 500 into 0 0.2 it was 20 percent. So, 100 kg and if 100 kg moisture uh, is in the in the product that is 500 kg paddy. So, we can easily get the bone dry weight that is 400 kg 500 minus 100. Now, amount of the water finally, after drying uh, will be how much that we need to calculate. So, let us say some amount of moisture will remain that is M w 2. So, weight of the product will be 400 bone dry weight plus M w 2 and this will be 15 percent moisture content weight basis. So, this into point 0 0.15 will be actually M w 2 right. So, M w 2 will come 70.588 kg. 
So, this is the amount of water in the product. Therefore, what will be the water evaporated that is 100 minus 70.588. So, 29.41 kg water we need to evaporate. So, this kind of analysis, this kind of uh, calculation is very common because most of the time when we want to store any grain, food, okay, we need to know that what is the safe uh, storage moisture level and we can convert it to dry basis or wet basis and then we finalize that how much moisture need to be taken out. Now, moisture determination method. Okay. So, there are many direct and indirect method of moisture determination. Okay. So, in the direct method we use mostly hot air oven, vacuum oven, then brown dual distillation method, infrared method. Okay. So, in all this mechanism uh, like what we do in the hot air oven we keep uh, 2 gram uh, of the sample and then we keep it at almost 105 plus minus 2 degree Celsius temperature for 24 hours and then we measure that what is the bone dry weight of the material and initial weight was known to us. So, we can calculate that what is the moisture content and uh, similarly there are certain indirect method <coughs> where we are not directly measuring that. Uh, by by gravimetric method that what is the amount of moisture is evaporated, but some indirect measurement technique we are using. For example, we are measuring the electrical resistance in the universal moisture meter. Okay. Then we can measure the dielectric method and also the chemical method. So, electrical resistance in the sense that moisture uh, uh, is uh, having certain amount of uh, conductivity. Okay. So, if the moisture is reducing, so that can offer the electrical resistance we can measure because of the changing moisture level. So, universal moisture meter measures that changing electrical resistance because of the changing moisture content. Similarly, the dielectric method we know that dielectric uh, property that also depend on the on the moisture content because moisture has a has a dipole um, rotation and then because of the the uh, orientation and reorientation of the moisture uh, the, the water molecules the dielectric heating mechanism uh, will change. So, because of that we can measure the what will be the moisture content in the in this method. Similarly, some material are there they can uh, absorb moisture. Okay. So, they are uh, hygroscopic material they can absorb moisture and based on uh, change of their weight we can measure that how much amount of the moisture has been uh, taken or, or absorbed by them. So, there are certain indirect method and certain direct method for determination of the moisture we can use any of them as per the availability. Okay. Then equilibrium moisture content. So, equilibrium moisture content this is the moisture content of the product in equilibrium with the surrounding air at given set of temperature and relative humidity. So, uh, this is because that the ambient always have a fixed temperature and relative humidity and any product uh, if if we keep in the ambient it will try to uh, come to an equilibrium with the ambient. Okay. So, the moisture content of the product in equilibrium with the surrounding air at a given set of temperature and relative humidity that is called the equilibrium moisture content and this equilibrium moisture content changes with different RH. So, it will be uh, more clear if we if we draw the diagram of equilibrium moisture content versus equilibrium relative humidity. Okay. And this particular curve is drawn generally at a particular temperature and it is fixed for a particular product as well. Because the products having different kind of uh, you know different structure uh, some are having very loose structure some can uh, have the property of absorption uh, of the of the moisture in a in a higher amount. So, they show the hygroscopicity 
or uh, you know formation of the lump and many different uh, quality. So, because of that when we want to uh, calculate that what will be the EMC or equilibrium moisture content, we need to draw the uh, the curve of equilibrium moisture content with respect to water activity or equilibrium relative humidity at a particular temperature. So, that is why this is called the isotherm okay. and moisture sorption is that because when we perform the drying operation. Okay. So, the product is losing moisture and generally uh, when, when we dry we, we uh, make the powder in a grounded form because because if uh, those are very you know the, the very fine particle then they have more surface area and the more surface area can absorb the most more amount of water from the ambience. Okay. So, in, in that uh, condition if those uh, product we expose to increasing water activity or increasing relative humidity ambience at a particular temperature. So, the product try to absorb moisture okay. and if uh, we keep it at different changing uh, water activity or changing relative humidity environment at a constant temperature at a constant temperature. So, it will show this kind of a plot okay, which is called the sorption isotherm. Okay. So, this sorption isotherm can give us the idea that corresponding to corresponding to what relative humidity what will be the EMC value. Okay. So, as the relative humidity will change equilibrium moisture content will be change at a particular temperature if we change the temperature then maybe we are getting a different kind of sorption isotherm. Okay. So, the main purpose of this is sorption isotherm can give us an idea whether the material gain or lose moisture that means, if we know uh, the, the sorption isotherm of a particular product and let us say uh, the, the moisture content of the product is now uh, 5 percent weight basis and or let us say 15 percent weight basis and then uh, we, we expose this product to a higher amount of relative humidity. So, the chances are uh, that this product will absorb moisture right and will reach from 15 to let us say 30 percent in due course of time. Okay. Now, if the product moisture is having higher value and it is uh, kept at a condition which is very low relative humidity then the product may be uh, losing the moisture. Okay. So, whether the material will gain or lose moisture that depends on the sorption isotherm behavior. Okay. So, uh, what is the rate of moisture removal that we can uh, guess out of this plot and also it will help us to determine the drying characteristics. Now, if we see the uh, different moisture content in a bit detail. So, there we can get the bound moisture and unbound moisture these two uh, basic classification. So, this is the relative humidity, this is the relative humidity versus moisture content curve at a particular temperature. So, this kind of a curve we are getting. So, when it reaches uh, when the relative humidity of the air is uh, 100 percent, when the relative humidity is 100 percent and here the moisture content in the in the x axis we have moisture content. Okay. So, then uh, this moisture this moisture where we uh, we get the free moisture available. So, this is called the unbound moisture and rest of the moisture is called the bound moisture. So, from the unbound moisture which is the moisture exert the vapor pressure equal to that of the pure water and the bound moisture which is 
physically or chemically bound to the solid matrix and it exert the vapor pressure less than that of the pure water at the same temperature. Now, if we further uh, lower the moisture content, so corresponding to a particular relative humidity corresponding to particular relative humidity let us say this point A we are getting the moisture content. So, that is the EMC that is the equilibrium moisture content. Okay. So, at this condition excess of the free moisture excess of the EMC is called the free moisture and if we consider at 100 percent relative humidity. So, as I said that bound moisture is equal to the free moisture. Okay. Now, we will see the hysteresis effect. So, what is hysteresis effect? This is actually when we perform the drying operation, when we perform the drying operation, uh, so then we decrease the moisture content of the product. Okay. So, we decrease the moisture content of the product. So, initially if the moisture content was at this point, when uh, it has drying has been performed and moisture content has been reduced to very low value. Now, after that if that dried material is exposed to increasing water activity. So, again it starts absorbing moisture right. So, it will try to absorb moisture, but these two curve will not similar there will be there will be a deviation between these two plot and this difference in the desorption and absorption curve of the equilibrium moisture content versus uh, relative humidity at a specific temperature is called the uh, hysteresis effect. Okay. So, if we look into this chart carefully in the uh, in the beginning of the water activity zone that is 0 to 0 0.3 almost in this zone the moisture is strongly bound with the uh, uh, with the molecular structure. So, these are the monolayer moisture content beyond uh, 0.3 to around 0.75 here in this zone in this uh, water activity zone the moisture is less strongly bound okay, less strongly bound and layers and capillary adsorb water is there. Beyond 0.75 the water is in the form of solvent and the free water. So, this water can be very easily removed. Okay. Then there is a uh, the process of water removal will be being slowed in this uh, the second zone which is of the 0 0.35 to 0 0.75 water activity zone. And as we move towards the higher uh, water activity, so pressure is also increasing and or temperature also increasing. So, temperature we can have different uh, temperature difference option isotherm. Now, method to determine the EMC one is the static method and another is the dynamic method. So, in the static method what we do temperature of the air is maintained uh, by an oven and relative humidity of the air is also maintained by the use of different concentration of uh, solution. Okay. Basically, we use uh, different salt solution to, to maintain the different uh, you know water activity and there is a dynamic method which is the desorption method and isotensioscopic method. So, uh, in the uh, in the isotensioscopic method what we do is we keep we take a isotensioscope which is kind of a uh, U tube and that is immersed in a liquid that is being heated at a at a particular temperature that is again connected with a bulb 
and here we we measure the uh, uh, you know different pressure vapor pressure and uh, corresponding uh, uh, water activity of that okay so by measuring that there is a there is a manometer attached to that which measures the different pressure uh, level because this is connected the u-tube is connected with it okay and we sometime release the pressure so that it will will uh, take the vapor out of it and again let us uh, keep it to to come to the equilibrium situation so in that we measure the um, uh, change in the in the in the vapor pressure time to time and corresponding uh, the the water activity so with that we can relate uh, the the different uh, we can we can calculate the different water activity and moisture content relation now there are different uh, models available those are the equilibrium moisture content models that works for different range of the relative humidity as we have seen that the if you follow the range of uh, relative humidity the curve pattern changes so in different different section different equations which have been uh, some are uh, derived empirically or some are, some are based on the uh, uh, physical principles so these are the certain models one is the kelvin equation that is based on the capillary condensation theory and valid for rh greater than 95 percent here ln pv by pv saturation vapor pressure and vapor divided by vapor pressure at the saturation condition that is equal to 2 into sigma v cos alpha by small r into capital r t a harkins jura equation that is based on the potential field theory valid for very low moisture content region that is r h less than 30 percent so this is ln of p v by p v s equal to d minus e by v square and chang first equation that is again potential field theory it is 20 to 90 percent so we can see that uh, this uh, equation has a very wide applicability 20 to 90 percent so and this equation is min uh, ln of p v by p v s that is equal to minus a by r t into exponential minus b m finally the henderson equation which is valid for all relative humidity range works on the gibbs adsorption principle that is 1 minus r h equal to exponential minus c t m e to the power n so in all all this equation uh, r h is the equilibrium relative humidity in the decimal capital m e which is the emc that is equilibrium moisture content in dry basis percent capital D is the temperature in degree Kelvin, C and N are the product constant varying with the materials, P V is the vapor pressure of grain, P V S is the saturated vapor pressure uh, at that condition and uh, sigma is the surface tension, V is the volume of moisture, alpha is the angle between the moisture and the capillary and R is the radius of the cylindrical capillary capital R is the universal gas constant and T A is the absolute temperature. So, using all this model uh, we can we can get the idea if the uh, so in this model for example if we use the Henderson equation. So, if R H is known to us we can find out the equilibrium moisture content value at that condition and uh, accordingly we can uh, uh, we can store it for a required relative humidity and temperature ambient. So, uh, if temperature of a grain and relative humidity are 30 degree Celsius and 10 percent the value of constant C and N are given as 3.11 into 10 to the power minus 7 per Kelvin uh, 10 to the power minus 7 per Kelvin and 3.03 .03, these uh, value of n. So, determine the EMC value using the Henderson equation. So, temperature is given and R h is given 0.1, C is given 
n is given. So, we will just put in the equation uh, Henderson equation. So, we will get the we will get the final value of equilibrium moisture content as 10.14 percent dry basis. Okay. So, if this is the safe uh, condition of storage at this uh, R H level 0.1. Okay. So, if we uh, give higher than this, so obviously, the moisture uh, the product will lose moisture and if we keep lower than this, it may absorb moisture. Now, coming to the drying rate curve. So, for any drying experiment the assessment of the drying rate is very important. Most of the cases in the in the food material uh, of very high moisture content uh, although we are we are not getting very uh, elongated uh, or very prolonged constant rate drying generally we get very short uh, constant rate drying and then we find a falling rate drying. So, if we normally see the moisture content versus time plot okay, the first plot where moisture content percentage dry basis has been plotted against time in our. So, starting from A, B, C to E this will be the normal uh, drying curve will look like this and if we plot the drying rate R with respect to moisture content then we can follow A, B, C, D and E this will be the pattern of the drying rate curve. Now, uh, if we consider when the when the air is coming on the uh, water film which is surrounded the product. So, the, the moisture the outside moisture will first uh, evaporate uh, and the inner moisture will try to diffuse to the surface. Okay. Uh, till till that flow is uh, you know exist we are getting the constant rate and when the inner moisture also recede to the the pockets and and the shrunken uh, cells and the flow of the moisture is not uh, very very high from the inner layer to the surface and the surface moisture recedes that time the falling rate starts falling rate uh, is again governed by many principle uh, like diffusion, uh, liquid diffusion, capillary diffusion, etcetera. So, initially the product temperature may be higher, uh, may be higher or lower than the drying air temperature okay, or ambient temperature. So, for that the initial adjustment period we can observe where either the product uh, will gain or uh, lose uh, temperature little bit and then uh, it starts you know constant drying rate uh, starts. So, the time till we are getting the uh, free moisture available at the surface or the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate at which the moisture is coming from the inner layer to the surface uh, exists then we are getting the constant rate and after that when we reach to the critical moisture content x c corresponding to the this point c then the falling rate starts. Okay. Again there may be uh, many different uh, phase of the falling rate we can see here in this particular case we are getting two distinct falling rate one is C to D and another is D to E. So, finally, when it reaches to E that is corresponding moisture content x E is the equilibrium moisture content at the R H and temperature condition prevailing in the uh, drying chamber. Okay. So, in the in the falling rate if we see that the first uh, first thing first phase like C to D. So, here the change in moisture because of the unsaturated surface drying this is called the first falling rate and in the second uh, phase this is internal movement of the moisture. So, that controls the drying. So, we are not getting a very straight line here, but a little curve surface we are getting. So, these are the other mechanism that the internal movement when it takes the control of the of the rate of moisture movement then we are getting the curve pattern. So, this is how we can we can uh, calculate the drying curve. Now, most of the time uh, if we want to want to plot the moisture content versus time 
we generally plot it with the free moisture. So, in that case we find the equilibrium moisture content at that condition and, uh, and uh, what we can do is initial moisture x 0 minus if we uh, do x e. So, that will give the free moisture. So, based on free moisture versus time we can uh, calculate the uh, you know drying rate uh, we can draw the drying rate curve also based on that or we can draw the moisture content versus time plot also based on free moisture. So, this we have already mentioned that x c is the critical moisture content where the constant rate completes and the falling rate starts and E m c is the uh, final moisture content equilibrium moisture content with the temperature and relative humidity of the drying air. So, beyond this we cannot lower the temperature in a drying experiment. Uh, okay. So, always the, the moisture content will be corresponding to the temperature and relative humidity of the drying air. Now, drying time calculation. So, we can divide the whole process of drying into constant rate and the falling rate period. So, for the constant rate period, since the uh, rate is constant in this case, so if we know that what is the uh, what is the change in the moisture content at any instant okay because moisture content we express in kg h2o per kg uh, dry matter okay so if if we know this moisture content so change in moisture content with respect to time and we'll multiply this with uh, w d that is weight of the dry matter. So, finally, we are getting k g of h 2 o divided by area a okay, divided by area a. So, then we are getting that how much moisture ev how much moisture evaporated per unit area divided by time. So, this r equal to minus w d by a into d x by d t th this gives us the uh, constant rate and if we integrate this from time t equal to 0 when the drying starts uh, and the moisture content was x 1 and to t equal to any time t when the moisture has been changed from x x 2 x 1 to x 2 then we can write the time as t c equal to w d by a r c r c is the constant rate into x 1 minus x 2. Okay. So, we can think of this condition like when the weight surface is there this may be of uh, grain or any food surface. So, when the air is passing over that the air will give the heat. So, that the weight surface will start drying and the moisture will evaporate it in the form of a flux which is N A and it is again mixed with the air stream. So, the moisture flux which is mixing with the air stream will cause increase in the humidity of the air product will be getting dried, drying will happen at a temperature of weight bulb that is T w and H w is the humidity of the surface. H is the humidity of the air stream that is used for the drying. So, then if we want to analyze the heat and mass transfer that happen in case of drying because we know that drying is a simultaneous heat and mass transfer operation. So, the product is getting dried. So, the mass is removed from the product and getting mixed with the dry air and uh, simultaneously the heat is uh, coming from the dry air to the product and utilizing uh, the heat the product moisture will be evaporated. Okay. So, uh, if we consider that what is the amount of heat that is coming from the uh, from the air to the surface. So, that will be the surface convective heat transfer coefficient h into the area a into the temperature difference that is uh, if the temperature of air is T 1 and the weight ball temperature at the surface is T w. So, this will be the total heat transfer from the air to the surface. Now, the material uh, the moisture will be evaporated taking the latent heat of vaporization. So, if we consider that m a is the molecular weight of 
moisture into N A is the uh, flux of okay, uh, mol molar flux of the moisture that is evaporated to the air. Lambda W is the latent heat of uh, vaporization of the water and A is the surface area. right? So, then this flux N A that has been changed with the uh, with this uh, parameter we can write that N A that is equal to K y which is mass transfer coefficient into mass transfer coefficient into uh, y w minus y that is uh, mole fraction of the moisture at the surface minus mole fraction uh, at the uh, air. Okay. So, this we can write and finally, if we want to change this mole fraction to the humidity. So, then we can write that this will be equal to k y m b by m a into h w minus h. So, that we have put here in this equation. So, we are getting lambda w into a into k y into m b m a m a will be cancelled into h w minus h. Okay. So, then we are getting this equation. So, that is this much amount of uh, heat required for evaporation of the moisture h w to h and this heat is coming from uh, this heat that is uh, the convective heat transfer from the air to moisture. So, R c that is the constant rate that we are getting that will be q divided by a into lambda w. So, q equal to h into t minus t w a q by a we have directly put. So, divided by lambda w and if we put the value of this So, here h into t minus t w that will be equal to this value. So, we can get k y into m b into h w minus h okay. because these and these are equal. So, finally, from this equation this R c if we put into this equation T c. So, T c will be lambda w into w d by a into h which is convective heat transfer coefficient into x 1 minus x 2 divided by t minus t w. So, first we have put the value of R c in this equation in terms of this and then we have replaced by this. So, finally, we are getting T c that is time in the constant rate drying period will be weight of dry material into x 1 minus x 2 that is the change in the moisture content. Uh, in divided by k y that is mass transfer coefficient into m b into area a into h w minus h. Okay. Now, the h which is convective heat transfer coefficient that can be further related to the mass velocity that is rho into g of the air stream because we need to know that what will be the convective heat transfer coefficient of the air to the moisture. So, h is equal to 0 0.0204 into g to the power 0.8 the condition is that if the air flowing parallel to the drying surface. So, if the air is flowing parallel to the drying surface h will be this one and if the air is flowing perpendicular to the drying surface then we use equation h equal to 1.17 g to the power 0.37. Okay. So, g is the mass velocity rho into v density into velocity. So, uh, there is a condition given where the grain are dried in a pan of this dimension heat transfer only due to the convection of the air having the velocity 5 meter per second flowing parallel to the surface of the material temperature and humidity of the incoming air 60 degree Celsius and 0 0.01 K 
kg H2O per kg dry air, weight bulb temperature of the air is 25 degree Celsius and humidity and latent heat at weight bulb temperature is 0 0.025 kg H2O per kg dry air and 2450 kilojoule per kg. Calculate the total rate of evaporation. So, first we need to find what is the humid volume here. So, humid volume is V that is equal to 2.83 plus 4.56 into H which is humidity of the air into 10 to the power minus 3 into temperature that is uh, T plus 273. Okay. So, putting this we are getting that V will coming 0 0.9575. So, V is what it is the humid volume and then rho is the density. So, density will be what kg per meter cube. So, volume we have calculated and kg will be amount of 1 kg air plus kg of moisture present in that air. So, 1 plus H by V. So, we are getting 1.0547 is the density of air kg per meter cube. Next will be g which is the air velocity. So, here air is flowing uh, parallel. So, g will be air velocity into rho. So, that is 18984.6 kg per meter square r. So, h formula of h will be 0 0.0204 g to the power 0 0.8 putting the value of g we are getting uh, H as 53.99 watt per meter square Kelvin. So, this is the convective heat transfer coefficient. Now, R c which is the constant rate is Q by A into lambda. So, Q is H into T minus T w by lambda. H we have calculated just now T minus T w is given 60 minus 25 okay. and then uh, So, uh, we have converted this to second and multiplied by 3600 divided by 2450 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, this is the latent heat of vaporization. Okay. So, we are getting 2.572 and total rate of evaporation that will be cross sectional area into the rate of evaporation. Okay. So, 2.572 into the area was 0 0.25 into 0 0.25. So, this will be 0 0.161 kg H2 per hour. We have converted uh, per hour by we have converted R c per hour by multiplying 3600. So, here we have represented it as uh, the motion the rate of evaporation as 0 0.161 kg H2 per hour. So, this is how we can calculate the uh, constant rate drying or uh, the rate of drying and also we can use this for finding the uh, time for the constant rate drying period. So, we will stop here, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.